Okay, so in chapter five, we're going to be looking at something called the T formulae. And these are formulae that basically link trigonometry to algebraic kinds of things. And these are the various things we'll be looking at. Um, basically, how to use them, basic scenarios. Then we'll do some identities and equations. And then for year two, they also throw in differentiation. And actually, what they do in year two, when you get to the chapter later on about methods and calculus, um, you also find out that you do some stuff with integration as well. And that's something that's called the via Strauss substitution. So T formulae does pop up at another place as well. And so really what it does, I've said in this chapter, we'll be looking at analyzing more complex trig functions more effectively. So you can get things that are kind of trig functions that look like this kind of thing. Um, and they have some really interesting kinds of patterns. And actually, they're very good for modeling things in real life. If you think even looking at this, it looks a little bit like the kind of thing you might see in like a hospital with um, someone's like heartbeat or something. And actually lots of things like this in real life can be modeled by trigonometry so this is why it's got some particularly good uses for this kind of stuff so we're going to actually sort of say like what the t formulae actually are how we derive them there's going to be two ways of doing this i'm going to do my way first of all and then i'll do the way that the more traditional way is of doing it because you might be asked for it um, but i actually just think my way of deriving it here is the best way for memorizing them because Unfortunately, they don't give you the T formulae in the formula book, which I always think is really silly because there's nothing to gain from memorizing it. Um, so I'm going to show you this way in just a second about how you can help um, how you can help yourself to memorize them. So let's have a look at the top here. It says that the T formulae are a group of formulae that allow you to transform trigonometric expressions and equations into algebraic expressions and equations. So the key thing here is we're going from something that's trigonometric to something that is algebraic. And what that can do is it can make some equations and problems much easier to solve. And we're gonna see where they come from, first of all. Now, a couple of things I'm gonna point out when we do these T formulae questions um, is you'll notice that they at the beginning say something like this. They'll say, given that T equals, and it's always tan, and it says, given that T equals the tan of theta over two, find the T formulae, and this time when they're doing it, the angle and this is not a typo, the angles are always double the size of this part that we've got here. They should always be double the size, otherwise um, it's it's not that, it's, it, you have to use different kinds of techniques, which will all come up in the course of us looking at this as well. So it doesn't have to be theta over two and theta. It could, could be theta and two theta, or it could be 2x and 4x but as long as there's that relationship with the angle doubling then you'll be able to use these formulae that we derive down here um, for this kind of particular setup and the setup is always that t equals tan of an angle okay so let's have a think through what we've got here. This is my preferred approach and it's to help with your memorizing because they're not given in the formula book. So this thing is given in the formula book. If you haven't yet done this part of trigonometry, this is the addition formula for tan where you have these two angles that are being added together. And what I'm going to do is think about how we can manipulate this to come up with some other versions of the formula, which will give us our first one here. Remember, we're saying that t is equal to tan of theta over 2. So this one's given in the formula book. And you know what? I get all of my students to memorize this one. This one is called the double angle formula for tan. And you can actually see how it's related to this one on the top here. Now, because it says 2a, that's like this one here. Instead of it saying a B, it's like it's saying an A as well. So if we imagine that being an A plus A, well, it would be a tan A plus tan A, which is why we've got here at the top the two tan A, because obviously tan A plus tan A is two tan A. And then on the bottom, because it goes minus plus instead of plus minus, that's why it's going to be a minus on the bottom, because we're doing adding two things together. Notice how this goes plus minus and this one goes minus plus, so it means we do a minus. And it would be tan A multiplied by tan A, which is tan squared A. So that's why we end up with two tan A over one minus tan squared A. This is something you just need to have memorized anyway. I mean, some people say, oh, I don't like to memorize these things. I don't like to do that. I just think you should do it. I just think it's going to help you with these things. So you're going to need to learn the double angle formula for tan 2a. OK, then you can see once you've got this thing memorized, it's quite easy to say, OK, well, I can recognize that if I wanted it to be tan theta, this one that I'm going to try and find out here, 
Because this is theta, I'm going to half this angle here and here. Because this is a 2a, I'm going to half this one to an a and an a. Well, if this one is theta, that's going to be a theta over 2, and that's going to be a theta over 2. And this is where we can now spot that I've got this tan theta over 2. I've got it here, and I've got it here. So this means that I can actually find out what tan theta is, this thing I was trying to find. I can say what it is in terms of t that I've got here. So I'm going to do this first one in this box down here. I'm going to say that tan theta is equal to 2 multiplied by t, because t is tan of theta over 2, and that is divided by 1 minus t squared. Now you'll probably be able to go straight to this if you know the double angle formula for tan. The double angle formula for tan is 2 tan a over 1 minus tan squared a. 2 tan a over 1 minus tan squared a. So get this thing into your memory because it's going to help you to remember this one. And then once you know what this one is, finding these ones becomes, well, I think quite a lot easier. This is the one that my brain remembers. Now, remember, there is a definition of what tan of theta actually is. It is always the opposite divided by the adjacent. So I can take it onto this triangle where I've got theta, because we're talking about the tan of theta. I can say that the opposite is 2t, and I can say that the adjacent is 1 minus t squared. And you're naturally wanting to think to yourself, well, I'm probably going to want to know what the hypotenuse is because then I can find out what sine theta and what cos theta are. So to find out what the hypotenuse is, the hypotenuse is going to be equal to, let's just say that I'll just sort of do some calculations for it. It is going to be the square root of 2t squared, which is going to be, I'll write it out properly, plus 1 minus t squared squared. So that's going to be the square root of 4t squared. And then when I just do this double bracket being expanded, that is going to be plus 1 minus 2t squared plus t to the power of 4. So simplifying that a little bit, we've got t to the power of 4 plus 2t squared plus 1. Then I want to think, can we factorise this part that we've got in here? And we can factorise that. If we factorise that, it should be a t squared plus 1 squared. Think about that. When you expand those double brackets, you get t to the power of 4 plus 2t squared plus 1. And the square root of that, whoops, get that calculator away. The square root of something squared is just going to be t squared plus 1. Now, actually the hypotenuse, rather than writing it as t squared plus 1, the traditional way of writing it is 1 plus t squared, so that it kind of has this mirror of this one, but written in that slightly different form. So I'm just going to shift that along a little bit so that it's, there we go, nicely positioned. So now that I've got that triangle, you're going to quite quickly remember, if you know that this one is 2t over 1 minus t squared, the hypotenuse is the, the remaining one, which is 1 minus t squared, but it just kind of flips to a 1 plus t squared. So it's kind of like the other one that goes with this, which means that sine theta is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And we can see the opposite here, and we can see it on the triangle. So it's going to be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, and we've just said the hypotenuse is 1 plus t squared. And for cos theta, it's the adjacent. Remember, adjacent is the um, denominator in the tan part. So it's going to be 1 minus t squared over the hypotenuse, which is 1 plus t squared. And these three things that we've got here, these are the t formulae. And you do need to have these memorized. Now, like I've said, I'm going to say this one more time. I know this one off by heart, and you all will do when you're doing pure maths. That means you can very quickly say, oh, well, it's 2t over 1 minus t squared. That's my opposite, so it will go there. And that's my adjacent, so it will go there. And then I know my hypotenuse. I don't have to do this whole process every time. It's just going to be the same as this one, but with a plus sign. OK, so let's have a look at this alternative proof, which in theory you can be asked about. So I've said that this proof can in theory be assessed, but it isn't a quick way to remember them, which is why I prefer the other method that we've just talked through. So this is kind of the full way that it goes about it in the book. But yeah, it's a proof, but it doesn't necessarily demonstrate. It's not a quick way to help you come up with these three things. So that's why I would heavily lean on this one for the memorizing kind of technique. 
Maybe you're just good at memorizing them. Maybe you don't need, maybe you can just get them in your head. So we're going to go about a different approach here. And it says the exact same thing is written in this box, that t is tan of theta over 2. And I don't know if you can notice what's different about this triangle and this triangle. Well, that one had an angle of theta because it was referring to this one down here. But this one has an angle of theta over 2, which is referring to this one. So at this beginning stage, we have said that tan of theta over 2 is equal to t, which I'm actually going to say is t over 1. So this time, t is the opposite, and 1 is the adjacent. So t is the opposite, and 1 is the adjacent. So now what I'm going to do is find out the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse will be the square root of 1 squared plus t squared square rooted. So the hypotenuse when you do Pythagoras is just 1 plus t squared square rooted. I'm going to try and find out what sine theta, tan theta and cos theta are um, in terms of t. Now what I can find out from this triangle is I can find out some other things. I can find out what, um, I know that tan of theta over 2 is t. I've already got that one. So let's find out what sine of theta over 2 is. Sine of theta over 2 is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So that is t over the square root of 1 plus t squared. And then cos of theta over 2 is the adjacent, which is 1 over the hypotenuse, which is 1 plus t squared. Now, if you haven't done the year two trig yet, you won't know these double angle formulae. This one we talked about just up here, didn't we? We talked about this one. I did it with a rather than two theta, but that's not a problem. And then we've got sine two theta and cos two theta. Basically, it allows you to take whatever the angle is here. You can split it into something different where the angles are halved. So we're trying to find out what sine theta and cos theta, we'll do tan theta afterwards, are. Now, they've told me this thing, that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. So using the logic of the angle being halved, sine theta must be 2 sine theta over 2 cos theta over 2. Notice how this angle is 2 theta and then they halve. This angle that I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find out what sine theta is, so I've halved the angle. Now, I know what sine theta over 2 is. Sine theta over 2 is this, and cos theta over 2 is this. So it is going to be 2 multiplied by t over the square root of 1 plus t squared, multiplied by cos 2 theta, which is 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. So the numerator is 2 times t times 1, which is 2t, and the denominator is my square root of 1 plus t squared times the square root of 1 plus t squared, which is 1 plus t squared. So we've now come up with the same thing on the previous part, that sine theta is 2t over 1 plus t squared, which is what we have right here. So I'm just going to fill that in down here. 2t over 1 plus t squared. Okay, now I'm actually going to do what cos theta is. So cos theta, we know that the formula for cos theta or cos 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. So cos theta would be cos squared theta over 2 minus sine squared theta over 2. So I'm going to use these two things that we've got here. Okay, I'm going to square the first one, which is the cos squared. So that's going to be the square of 1 over 1 plus t squared squared minus sine theta squared, or sine of theta over 2 squared, which is t 1 plus t squared all squared. Now when you square the 1, you get 1, and when you square the denominator, you get 1 plus t squared. When you square the t, you get t squared, and when you square the denominator, you get 1 plus t squared. So our last part, they've got a common denominator, means we can just write them as one single fraction. We get 1 minus t squared, over 1 plus t squared. So cos theta is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Now for tan theta, we could just go straight in and use the double angle formula for it, just like we did in the previous one. So using this part that we've got, we're going to say that tan theta is 2 tan theta over 2 over 1 minus tan squared theta over 2. And we know that tan theta over 2, the very beginning part that we said was that it was just equal to t. So we get 2t 
over one minus t squared. But I am gonna show you another way that this is true. 2t over one minus t squared. That's usually the first one I would do. But there's another way you could do this. So if I think about an alternative thing, and I think how else do I know what tan theta is equal to? And I'm showing you this because I really just wanna show you it just works with all of the different connections with trigonometry, it is still gonna work. So thinking to yourself what tan theta is also equal to, I'm hoping you're saying to me sine theta over cos theta. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put my sine theta, which is my 2t over one plus t squared, big fraction line, and cos theta is one minus t squared over one plus t squared. Now, some people would like to write this as like this one divided by this one, but I'm into the habit of writing small fractions within big fractions and then thinking to myself, what do I need to do to both of them? What do I need to do to the numerator and the denominator to kind of stop them being fractions? Well, I would want to multiply this top one by one plus t squared, so I would also have to do the same to the bottom. I'm gonna multiply them both by one plus t squared. And what that does is it cancels that one's denominator and it happens to cancel that one's denominator as well. So we end up with the same thing that tan theta is two, uh, 2t, go away calculator, over one minus t squared. So for this alternative version, you could do tan theta in this particular way. Now, a quick little side note is this is technically sort of assuming that it's all for acute angles because we're doing it for this particular triangle. If you are interested, there is a more like formal algebraic proof that uses some year two kind of stuff, but this would be perfectly fine to have at this stage. I don't want to go too deep with these proofs because they don't really ask this kind of stuff. Um, they're more likely to be asking you to think about all of these connections that we've got. So in the next one, we're going to do some simple applications about how we use the T formulae. Um, because all you know right now is how to write sin, cos, sin, cos, and tan in terms of T. So get these memorized. Um, I would highly recommend this memorizing technique that we've got up here. Way, way more simple. Okay, see you in the next video.